Hi and welcome to another video. You'll notice in this video I've actually improved the screen resolution because I know on previous videos screen resolution wasn't great. Unfortunately the Mac doesn't have a good screen resolution for the screencasts so I've had to move on to an external desktop so you'll notice I'm looking in this way but as you can see here we've got this page. We're effectively going to build modals that are fully server-side rendered. Everything's going to be on the server there's no use client and uh, you'll see it works with like a loading and um, grid of, of products and then when you click on the modal we'll have a loading screen as well in the modal so let's show you that now got this products page pretty basic home products so if I go to products you can see it loads in these products from a public API and we've got all these products here and then we can click view more and you'll see it has instantly loaded that up and this is all on the server and we're doing that by using the URL state so the state in the URL which is these two query parameters modal true and the other one is ID the ID of the product should we get into it show you the code so if we just start this application okay so i'll just start by explaining to you what we've got here we've got basic stuff that has been created by next.js create next app such as the vs config the tailwind we have got some some custom tailwind keyframes and animation in here and some colors um, but other than that it's basically the same as what you'd get from the create next app we have our post css that same again create next app generates that for you we have a package json so these are the packages we are using got React UI, React Slot, Class Variance Authority, CLSX, Lucid React, Next.js, React, React DOM, Tailwind Merge, Tailwind Animate, and we have a few dev dependencies in there as well, but nothing special here. It's really quite basic. And then we have our API endpoint, which is a remote pattern in Next.js config, just so we can get our images from this endpoint. Otherwise, Next.js errors out. We have a middleware, which I'll, I'll run you through. So the middleware, effectively, what this does is it puts the path name into the headers so that we can take the path name, such as forward slash products, anywhere in our application. So it puts it as a header in our application. The header's name is X path name. We take the request, we get the headers, and then we set the X path name to the request dot next URL dot path name, and then we respond with those headers. So again, you can get these from anywhere in your application. This this path name. Uh, we have bun. We have some kind of utility tools such as the the class name, and then we have our API endpoints. That is the fixed or API slash products then you'll see if i uh, refresh this page we've got the same home page but there's nothing on the products page at the moment we've got the loading ui i didn't want to spend time teaching you how to build the loading ui although i will briefly touch on it just to show you a neat little way to speed up development for creating that loading ui which you probably haven't heard of i certainly hadn't until recently and it's helped me speed up that process of creating those uh, skeletons that you see those uh, ui skeletons were a nightmare to create at one point but i'll teach a little trick a bit later in the video and then we have page our layout and then we've got our products page and our products loading ui which i just showed you there so that's just the skeleton i, I didn't spend too much time on this because you can go into quite advanced creation of skeletons and uh, that's not something i wanted to spend time on so then we've got our header product card product loading and product modal and our ui for the card which is just something generated by shad cn ui and we have our layout Layouts. So our product layout and our app layout. App layout is just some padding, basically. Okay, so let's start now then. We have this products page. This products page is where we want to show a list of our products, just like I showed you before. And to do that, we are going to have to build out a few things. We have to bring in the products layout and then map through the products themselves, which we get from a public API. And then we're going to have to put in the modal here. So it's like a global thing because, or at least global on the products page, because it would be within here. Maybe sometimes there's going to be cases is where you want a global modal and, and that would be a bit more of a technical challenge to implement from a server side point of view but it's still definitely doable could include it in the in the layout here so we'll start by by opening up this and as you can see we have these types we've got the product type and the props so this this props here is basically what comes into every page in Next.js. Every page that has page.tsx, the file name, will bring in search params, but also I think there's one or two more, but we won't get into those. So the search params are something that, that are in the URL, what I showed you, which is the modal and the ID. So we will start by, uh, actually, let's, let's not open up that. Let's actually start by getting the const. Let's do modal equals props.searchparams.com. 
modal and we can actually call this show modal now we want to get our product id so const product id so those are the parameters we're going to be taking from the url to be able to render uh, the product modal on the page now we want to get our response equals await fetch we actually want to just put in our product api and we want to revalidate this every 60 seconds and then we can actually just do this products equals response to json and we can just put this as product array so that's it now we have a way of getting our products from the api one thing i've just noticed is we actually need to put this to true because the url search parameters are, are strings by default so show modal if that exists in the url query parameter and um, if the id exists then we've got both of those here and that equals true and then the product id we can we can turn that into an integer at some point when we need that cool let's open this up and do product layout our product layout is basic we just have a grid four columns and a gap of four so that's our layout for our products now we could use the Next.js layout component. Maybe that's something we'll do a bit later is we'll refactor this so that that product layout is in its own layout.tsx file since that is what Next.js was built for or at least Next.js app router. Okay, we now want to take our products and we want to map over our products. In fact, let me just show you something. If we just console log our products you'll see what we're getting back. We refresh this. You can see here in the console, we have basically the data back from the API, which is just some basic product data. So let's get rid of that. And we're mapping over those. And now we want to put that into a product card. So we've mapped over our products and we now need to render them on the UI. So let's just make sure we put an index here. Sorry, key equals index. So that should put our products on the the page let's take a look okay great so i spent some time before this just designing these products but i'll leave the link to the source code of this if you want to take a look but as you can see quite basic and yeah we've got all our products here so the goal now is to when clicking on view more we want to be able to show more product data we want to expand on the product and we want to do that on the server using url query parameters to open the modal okay so the way we do that is using the show modal so show modal and then we want our product modal our id and our product id to go in there cool one other thing we want to do is to be able to show a loading ui when the modal opens and the way we have to do that is with react suspense so if we do suspense so we've wrapped it in a suspense boundary and we need to add a fallback and the fallback is going to be the product loading ui product loading yeah product loading is just some skeleton i created so now what does that do well when the modal opens it runs a fetch request so you could technically put in the product data from the array of products that you get back here you could do that but why wouldn't you do that probably in a real life scenario you would have multiple different api endpoints and one of them would be for getting a single product and one of them would be getting like a paginated list of products so you'd have two different endpoints and therefore you wouldn't necessarily pass in one of the elements in the array of products so that's why we do that we're passing in the product id into the product modal and then what we're going to do is we're going to fetch based on the ID. So let's just check how this is looking. If we go to back to here, we go to our product card. So what we need to do now is we need to, when clicking view more, we need to open up the modal. Because at the moment, the modal could be open. Uh, so actually, let me let me show you this. We've got show modal true, and we have a product ID. And so if we show modal, we actually add this modal equals true. Well, oh, I'm gonna put question mark, you can see, We've got our modal UI like that. Um, so it's in there. Let's just get rid of that. So we now need to go into our product card. And do you remember that thing that I showed you before with the headers, uh, the path name in the middleware of Next.js where it sets the path name as one of the headers, which is called X path name. That is what we want to get here. So we need to use const headers list equals headers. And we need to get those headers from Next.js. So import headers from next headers 
So we've got our headers list. Now we want to get our path name. So that's that's great. Now the alternative would be to use uh, use path name, but that's a client side hook that can only be used when you set the component to use client. But in this case, the goal is to always use server components. So let's just console.log path name. Okay, let's take a look at this. There's our path name, which is products. That's what it's getting. So now we need to create a new URL that we can redirect to using the view more button, which opens up the product in the mode. And the way we're going to do that is using the new URL, which is like a native JavaScript tool that we can use or API const URL equals new URL. And we're going to do path name. If we have path name, we have path name there. Otherwise we have, we have basically no path name there or we could just set that to to home obviously that the headers returns string or null but that should always be in this case because we're on the products page it should be forward slash products and then we've just got our main domain name you'd typically replace this with an environment variable or um you know your actual domain name which would be held in an environment variable we've got that now we want to set the url parameters so url dot search so we want to do dot set modal equals true and we also want to set the product id like that so now we've got our url with modal equals true and product id what we want to do now is just replace these elements with next.js link and we want to do href equals url dot to string now we also want to set scroll equals false because it's not a great experience when you click on a modal and it scrolls to the top of the page so that's that now we can copy this because this is the, the the link covering the image we can copy this down into this element here which is the button so that is basically it in terms of opening up the modal because if you check now what this is doing is it's going to set the parameters on the url and it is going to set that to true and it's going to set this to the product ID and we're going to pass in the product into this this product modal. So let's just spend some time in the product modal and see what we have to do here. Okay, so we open this. This should now change the URL and open up the modal. Let's check. There we go. So as you can see, now what I'm doing is I am clicking this outer boundary of the modal and it's closing it and I'm clicking the X, it's closing it. But if I click in in here, obviously, nothing happens. And so let's just go into the product modal and see how that's happening. We're doing that by using the same method we did to open the modal, which is just a link. And we're redirecting the user to the products page. And then we're setting the scroll to false. Got this outer boundary. This here is the outer boundary, which is a link. Uh, we've set the cursor to default so that it doesn't look like a kind of clickable thing, but you can do it, you can click. And then we've got um, an X icon which has the same thing, setting its products. We're effectively clearing out the URL search parameters. So the next step then is to actually fetch the product. At the moment, we're just showing nothing, some dummy data that I've put here. But what we want to do is we want to check if the ID exists, if no ID, if no ID or is nan parsing id it is not a number we also want to just redirect here i'm going to redirect to forward slash products because there's no id there's no point in opening the model and showing them something that doesn't exist then we just want to const response equals away and then we want to fetch our product api product api and the product api takes in the id so parse int id 10 and that is a publicly available API where you just pass in the ID of the product after the path name. So I can show you what that is. We go to lip constants. You've got this, this is the product API. And so what we're effectively doing is that forward slash the ID. And then we just const product product equals await to JSON. So now we have our product. Let's just check console.log product. There we go. That is now our product. And as you could see, it, it loaded like with the with loading UI. So in terms of the loading UI, I did mention before that we're, I was going to show you a neat way to build that. And that is, let me just show you here so we can get rid of this product now. What we can do is if we go to our product loading, 
So what we're doing is when you click on this, we're setting the loading UI. And if we just inspect this and we go to components, we check this component, you can see we've got this suspense boundary here. And what we want to do is we want to click on this element and you can see that toggles on and that allows you now to edit the UI. So if I just go back, I've got this product loading and I want to remove this element here. So I can do that by just removing this element. So that should remove this one. Press save. There we go, it's gone. So that's a cool way to, to test your loading skeleton, uh, which will save you a lot of time. But that is basically it in terms of how to set up a fully server-side rendered modal in Next.js. And so we go back to home, refresh, big products. We've got our loading skeleton there, which is actually created in this Next.js loading.tsx file. And then we have our loading for the opening of the components using the URL query parameters. Um, one thing I would improve here is probably this product layout could actually just be a layout.tsx file. TSX, just do that. Layout, product, layout. Actually, let's just do layout. And then we have our product layout, product layout. And then we can just get props, props with children. And we can do props.children. And that's allowing me now to just remove this from here. Just turn that into a, a React fragment, and then I can also remove it from here. So now it, the layout is is wrapping the modal as well. So I'm not sure if this is going to have a negative effect, but I'll have a look. So if I remove that, remove that, and we test again. Oh, need to go to here, explore default. Okay, there we go. It looks good. So we just moved that component and then, yeah, it all still works. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, if you have any feedback or if you'd like me to answer any questions you have, please leave a question in the comments. I'll make sure I produce more good content like this and uh, yeah, have a great day. Thank you.